the Government Analytics Handbook is a blueprint that allows governments and scholars to leverage data to diagnose and improve how public administrations work. There's always been demands for government to get better, deliver better services, be more efficient. And the question is how does government respond to that? One of the things that excites me about government analytics is that this data revolution that we've seen in the private sector is very much feasible in the public sector. And it's very much feasible in the public sector because governments are ultimately about record keeping. Governments keep records of every good and purchase they make. Governments keep records of every payment make they, they make to a public servant. Governments keep records of every social security claim that they process. And these records can all be repurposed as data points. I think that's why we wrote the Government Analytics Handbook, because the amount of analytics that's done in government is still quite small. So for instance, in one study in Russia, they found that if a procuring agent that buys the same goods as other procuring agents in governments, but that buys them for more expensive prices, if they just moved to the top quartile, the government would save 15% of health spend. It's been fascinating for me to see when governments have taken the data they have or surveys seriously and to watch them change. And it gives us a glimpse of the future. So what the handbook allows you to do is both get this holistic understanding of how government analytics works, but it also allows you to focus on particular data sources that you might be excited about. I don't think the idea is that anyone's going to read cover to cover. I think the idea is that you sort of, you read the overview, you get an understanding of how the book works, and then you dip into the chapter that matters for you. Absolutely. So the overview is really helpful to get a holistic understanding of government analytics and of all the different data sources that you could use to strengthen public administration. So the second part of the book is about foundational themes. So those are helpful if you want to understand, for instance, the ethics of conducting government analytics. Then the third part of the, or third volume of the book, focuses on administrative data. And then in the fourth volume, we look at one data source that has been most widely used actually by governments around the world. And that is the idea of surveying public servants. And then in our last volume, we look at external data sources. So this is in a way looking at data sources outside government to understand government. For instance, looking at citizen surveys or looking at ethnographic analysis of the way public administrations work. Um, so on the website, you can download the book. You can download the overview of the book. You can also download each individual chapter. But then importantly, you can also download toolkits for every single chapter. So if you want to run a survey of public servants, there is a range of toolkits on the website. So the book is very much not just a collection of chapters, but it's also a collection of tools that help you undertake government analytics in your organization. Government analytics matters because it determines how the public sector functions having the right laws, regulations on the books doesn't matter if you don't have the right machinery to implement them. So investing in government analytics today is going to reshape government and mean a better, stronger, more equitable government tomorrow. It's time for the public sector to join the data revolution. It's time for government analytics.